So Jeep overheating issues. Four liter Jeeps, notorious for running a little bit on the hot side anyway. Fine. But on a real hot day now, if you're sitting in heavy traffic, it's starting to creep up a little bit more now. It's starting to get to the point where it's uh, almost boiling over, overheating. So a couple different things could be causing the problem and I go through those with you. First thing I think is the issue is the fan clutch is starting to go. Right now you can spin the fan and I'll flip you around and show you how to spin the fan when it's cold and when it's hot. But uh, one of the big things right now is I think the fan clutch is going and how these things work is you can see on the back side, you can see that little heat coil there. What happens that heat coil heats up and then locks this up so it doesn't turn. You being hot right now, when one misconception is a lot of people might think that, hey, when the Jeep's hot, that this fan should be locked up and engaging. Well, you can see right now that it's hot and the fan is actually moving fairly freely. Well, I'll show you why that is and how to actually check these things. Uh, so I got up to operating temperature. So what you're gonna find though, is when you move this, if you're moving this slow, it's not gonna have a lot of resistance. It's got some resistance, the fan's gonna spin. You're gonna see the fan spinning in your car just fine, you're not gonna notice it. But what happens is when you get this going, uh, this gets hot, warms up, opens this coil open. What happens is that coil opens up and there's a fluid inside this cavity. So that fluid starts to come out with centrifugal force when that valve's open from the, from the heat spring. So as it cools off, this spring contracts, the valve closes, the fluid then gets itself tracked back up into the, into the center of the uh, hub. But what's happening is the fluid comes out and in. So you have to be up at least to idle speed of, you know, seven, 800 RPM for that centrifugal force to start moving that fluid out. That's what causes this to lock up. So if I try to push this harder, you can see that there's more resistance. And I'll, obviously now I, I'm not getting it up to, you know, any type of uh, speed where I can get it, uh, where the fluid will start working its way out. But you can tell the faster it spins, the more resistance you're gonna have. That's how you actually check it. So when it's cool, you're gonna see a little bit more, re less resistance than this. So that's what you're after when you're trying to check these. But that's basically how they work and how you can do a quick test. How accurate this test is, is that's, I'll be honest with you, that's up to you, you're feeling touch with it because it's really, yeah, yeah. I think to be honest with you, for what they cost, 58 bucks, if, you, if you're suspicious of your fan clutch not working, I would buy a new one. I think the radiator cap's also going bad. This is not, it's definitely not a cause for it, but uh, when you don't hold pressure in your radiator, the temperature boiling point drops, so you're more likely to boil over and overheat quicker that way. So, I mean, of course, you know, the cap is an easy fix. The other thing, while I got it apart, I, while I have the uh, fan clutch off, I'm gonna put a new water pump on. The water pump is probably fine, it, but it's been on there for, I, I'd say, at least 100,000 miles, so it, it does need to be replaced. I'll also put a new thermostat in. Uh, the thermostat's probably fine also. I know it's kicked, you know, in traffic and stuff, it kicks on and off, so that's not gonna be a big deal. But nonetheless, while I have it apart, I'm just gonna do some preventative maintenance on it at the same time. I'll also show you a couple things to get these the fan clutch off to get the fan off to do the water pump and all that This large nut here is really hard to get off sometimes First thing you want to do is pop off the radiator cap Make sure your Jeep's cold before you do this Don't try to take the radiator cap off when it's hot Pop this guy out of the way Like I said mine was really loose Get him out of the way uh, The other thing you want to do is we're going to pull the radiator out I want to clean the radiator while we're doing this too So pull that reservoir hose And the way this tank works you can see these little notches You can hopefully see that that little button right there, you need to pull that out a little bit and then lift up and the tank will come right out. There we go. A little hard to do one-handed, but that's all right. We'll come down underneath the Jeep and drain the radiator. The petcock's right on the passenger side in the back there. You can see it, and all you gotta do is just, is just unscrew it counterclockwise. What we're going to do is we've got to take this fan clutch off and what's going to happen is this whole thing is going to spin as a unit. It's going to pull on this pulley. So what we got to do is we got to hold this pulley so we could crank that nut off. I take these two top bolts out and then I'm going to put a bar on a bolt of bar onto here so I can hold that pulley from spinning and then I can grab this large nut and back the large nut off. I'm too cheap and I don't have the tool to go over the top of that pulley so what I'm going to do is I just got a piece of 3 16ths uh, bar it's about 16 inches long or whatever i'm just going to take a measurement between the two bolts here and here so the distance between the bolts are two and a quarter so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put two holes two and a quarter inches apart in my bar two and a quarter on 
my plate of steel that I'm going to drill my holes in. So that's done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to favor these to the bottom side because if not, you know, that thing's round. So if you put it in the middle, of the middle, you're going to have to cut out more. So I'm probably going to have to cut out a little section out of here too once I put the two holes in. I'm getting ready to drop the two holes into the tool. Uh, the two bolts that I took out for this tool to align to were uh, half inch headed bolts and they are 5 16 18 thread pitch. So what I did is uh, if you run them through this tool and then through the pulley, you can see you're not going to have a lot of engagement. So I did go with approximately 3 8 inch longer bolts to go through the tool and the pulley because I don't want to mess up the, the pulley mount surface. You can do these by hand. I have a mill here, so it's just easier for me to do it that way. The hole size I'm putting in here is roughly 3 8 It's just a clearance hole. I want it to be a little bit bigger, so I've got some play on the holes when I put the bolts in. But like I said, these can be easily hand drilled. Don't fuss about it. It is no big deal. So I did have to cut a little scallop in there. All right, so now I got the tool in place. You can see I put the new uh, 5 16 bolts in here. Got my big crest wrench on there. I got my bar. And I should just be able to separate these guys. Crank that. Ah, that wasn't too bad at all. I was able to break that free pretty easy. Sometimes these things can be really hard to break free. I think I had more trouble trying to line the crest wrench up in here than breaking that free. So with that broken free, I'll be able to spin the fan out of the way. I can take my tool back off now, and that's it. That was a piece of cake. I haven't had any breaks on anything lately, so it was a big win for me. Usually these things can be a real, a real pain to get off, but this one popped off pretty easy. Never works out that for me. Mm tools out of the way and hopefully the fan should just spin right off of it. And hopefully I'll be able to get it out of the shroud pretty easy. If not, I'm going to pull the radiator a minute anyway, so it's going to give us some more room to work on that water pump too. And clutch out of the way. All right, to remove the serpentine belt, half inch drive ratchet, put it into that half inch drive socket port and just pull down and the serpentine belt will come right off. Piece of cake. All right, next up, we're gonna pop off the lower radiator hose. Snap that dude on there. Let's see how this one pops off. the rest of that that's it and then the ah oh, come on <laughs> so <laughs> my, as soon as I let pressure off it started dripping radiator fluid right on top of my camera from the petcock ah pop these couple trans lines off here get these out of the way you can see mine have been uh uh, not mine. It's Jesus Haley's. It's not mine. So we got this trans line out of the way. We got one more right back over here. It needs to come off right up here. We'll pop this guy off next. Put the pan underneath there. And I almost got the camera again. Um, I got stuff dripping everywhere. Pan's not big enough. I'm just making a stinking mess. Hmm. I don't like messes. I don't like laying in transmission fluid either. That sucks. Take out these, there's four half inch bolts right here, one down at the bottom, and on the other side, same thing. So I'm gonna take those guys out of here and just take the shroud out of the way. I'm tired of fighting around it. So bottom side of the shroud, you can see where the trans lights hooked to it. Pull that off. Off there. All right, I just got that little Christmas tree clip pulled out of there. 
right, man. Just got trans fluid dripped on my forehead. Ah! All right, so I got that out of there. Just dropped my hat and trans fluid. You can see what's happening. That's dripping on my head. Not, not that much fun. I hate that. Back up here now that we got that clip off, this should just slip right out of there. And that's removed now. Well, that just made it a, about a hundred times easier to get in here and get the rest of the bolts out for the radiator. I think it's just, let's see how the wrench goes through. There's a clearance hole down at the bottom here. Let me get you down there. You can take a look at the clearance hole. Oh, see, there's a clearance hole. You can just go right through there. Same thing up here. There's a clearance hole right here. You go in and you get the bolt right through there. Maybe you can see it. Maybe you can't. All right, we got the radiator pulled up and out of here. Uh, you can see through it, but man, like down towards the bottom, you can see how much crud and crap is in there. And that's not helping anything. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hose it out really good. The one thing I did, just because I'm tired of things leaking around and I don't wanna leak stuff around, I did plug off the uh, caps for the trans lines. Uh, I'm gonna run the rest of this radiator fluid out, capture that, and then I'm gonna hose this out good with a hose and flush it good with fresh water. See all that junk washing out of there. Oh, there's smoke. Yeah, look at all that stuff washing out of there. All right, I'm just going to take the condenser. I decided not to unbolt it. I didn't want to mess around with this thing. I'm afraid if I break these seals or whatever, I'm just going to have problems with the air conditioning, so I'm not going to mess around with it. I'm just going to take the hose and just close this thing out hopefully not get soaking wet doing it condenser cord is pretty thin and there is a lot of those white fuzzy stuff floating around so. and this is just the efficiency of the air conditioner but it also when you're driving down the road when this is all blocked up it's also restricting air going to the radiator too so tighten this uh, tool back on here we made earlier and then I'm just gonna go through and just break these guys loose again we'll back to half inch wrench all right let's knock this pulley off I'm just gonna take a brass hammer give that a little tap there we go off it goes you don't want to go tapping that with a steel hammer or anything here. All right, holding the water pump on. There's five half inch bolts. One, two, three, four, and five. We'll just knock those guys out really quick. All right, so to get the water pump out of the way, I'm gonna have to take this idler pulley off. This idler pulley is a 9 16 Let me just pop him off there real quick. And that should give us enough access to the water pump. And while we're at it, we'll check this bearing too, just to make sure the bearing Sounds good while well, we got it apart. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to replace that guy. I'm going to order a new bearing today. Pick that up and replace it while we got it apart. Might as well. Don't need a don't need an idler pulley failure. All right, that's the five bolts for the water pump. Now. Should just be able to grab that guy and separate it. All right, back to brass hammer again. Brass hammer for a little separation. There we go. And you know, I'm just going to separate that part line now from here. That should slide right out of there. The water pump is three. And I just dropped my wrench. And then what we'll do is we'll take this hard line off, put it on the new pump, and then we could put the lower radiator hose on the new pump, or we could just install it back in the car. It doesn't really matter. And the new pump are different and probably in a good way. So the old pump has a plastic rover on it, and the new pump, which I think is going to be a little bit better quality, uh, has a metal fin on it. So I'm thinking that that pump might be just a little bit better. All right, I'm going to pull the front face. 
the knockoff so I can change the thermostat. Okay. Oh, I just cleaned up again. My word. Yeah, it looks like somebody silicone this gasket in there. I don't like that at all. My new thermostat did not come with a gasket, so I'm back to the store. I'm going to buy a gasket and seal this upright because there's no way that I am taking this apart again. All right, I took some time and did a real nice job cleaning up the gasket surfaces. I got those all prepped and ready to go. Oh, you know what else I noticed too? I was looking at these pulleys. Uh, this idler pulley is also shot too. You can see how much noise that's making. So I'm going to have to take this idler pulley off too while I'm at the store. I might as well replace that. We got everything apart right now. It'd be silly not to do that. So we're just going to pop this tensioner off, put the new one on. So this bolt that holds the tensioner on is a T40 star. So I'm just going to pop that bead out of there. Ah, there we go. All right, the tensioner torque spec is going to be 35 foot pounds. So, there we go, 35 foot pounds. Tensioner's done. What I did is I cleaned everything up. I shot it with some black paint because it was pretty rusty and corroded. I also cleaned up the threads really well. I'm gonna put some thread sealant on the threads before I screw it in. I'll just go ahead and hit that a little bit. It's probably way more than enough. Put that guy in there. So remember when you tighten this dude down, uh, you gotta do this off the vehicle too. You can't do it in the car. There's not enough room to turn it. Get that tuned in there and then get yourself three quarter inch. And so that tube almost has to be nine degrees from the, from the pump itself. So we'll give that a little bit more of a turn. So actually that snug down about perfect. All right, so the difference between the pulleys, the outside diameter are perfectly the same. The only thing difference between the new one and the old one I had is the old one had a much deeper dish than this one. This dish is much smaller in diameter here. So the original washer that I had is not gonna work. So yeah, let me give you a better view of that, not gonna work. You can see it's not sitting inside the cup. So what I did is I had a smaller washer. So I went with a smaller washer. That's gonna fit down inside of that guy. And then the spacer behind it's gonna come in and center all this mess back together the way it should. Voila, new other pulley setup. Kind of screwy. They're just half inch bolts and my trusty air ratchet. hammer there we go brass hammer does it kind of like a brass monkey but better and make sure that i put this fan on the right way so it's only going to go in one way you don't want to put the fan on backwards oh yeah i just took a fan in the gut so we're going to put the water pump back in. I've got the gasket on the back. I've got two, two bolts in it. There's a total of five that go. I try to get the two that are easy enough. And then, like we talked about before, this coolant tube, that's going to stick right down through there. So I will get the... That was easy enough. And then we got good clearance on the tube over here. So that worked out fine. This one in the center is a longer bolt. Four of them are the same. The one in the center is the longer bolt you're going to use. So keep that in mind as you put it together. The one at the bottom, like I said, is pretty much dead center. You can't see it, but if you look straight down, it's pretty much dead center. We have them all snugged up. I'm just going to go and torque them down. 18 foot pounds. Like I said, I'm just doing it in a cross pattern. Just to keep everything nice and even. All right, we'll go ahead and put the lower radiator hose back on. Yeah. Slide him around there. It's a question of will now. It's not a question of knowledge, because obviously I don't have any of that. Ow. Yep, there's proof of it too. I just pinched my finger. 
felt less than awesome. So it's will and persistence now. It's, it has nothing to do with skill, knowledge, or, or taste. I shall grab it with my trusty grippers. I have a tool for this too. But I refuse to go back to the toolbox to get it. Sure be a lot easier. Yep, I got the tool to put this on. And you know what? Boy, it's way easier. Boy, okay. Some people will never learn. Look at that. Next up, the water pump pulley. I'm just going to hand tighten two of the bolts on for now. Now, and put the serpentine belt on. I just wiped off all the pulleys and I wiped off the belt. So, we'll get this dude routed around, around here. So, the way the serpentine belt goes around the bottom side of the crank pulley, top side of the water pump. Bottom side of the AC compressor, groove side down, across top side of the power steering pump, across the tensioner pulley, down across the bottom side of this idler pulley, and then to the alternator, and I drop my half inch wrench. But that's all right. We'll grab this dude. And we'll just give him a pull down. And around the alternator. We go. We go around the alternator. Power steering. Align around the AC. Check everything out. Make sure everything's perfect. Kind of love it. All right, that's it for the belt. Super easy. I'm tucked back in here. I got the shroud sitting here loose. The fan in the shroud. I think it's just easier to get the fan in there. And I'll start this dude back on the... That's that. Tighten the fan up. All right, I got the tool back in place. I'm just gonna give this a good snug now. All right. Snugged up. Next up, I'm just gonna run these four seven sixteenths bolts in here. Hold the fan shroud on. I'm just gonna put the catch can back in. That just lines up on those two little slots down there on this plastic piece. All right, make sure that petcock is tightened back up snug. The last thing you wanna do is put radiator fluid in it and it starts leaking out. All right, so the fluid that I took out, I am just gonna strain it and reuse it. I put it in a clean bucket. No sense on wasting it, stuff's expensive. Run through a good paint strainer, and I'm gonna strain it a second time when I put it in the radiator just to make sure I don't get any junk in here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up and let it run for a minute. The radiator's filled, but I got at least a half gallon that uh, was supposed to be that I took out that needs to be back in there, so I'm gonna fire it up and see if we can suck the rest of it in. Brand new cap too that I'm gonna put on, but I'm gonna let this bubble down a little bit. So I put too much radiator fluid in the beginning. I capped it off because it was spilling all over the place, but that was a mistake too, because it's got a giant air pocket in here. And you can see where it started to swell the hose a little bit. There's a lot of pressure on there and it's cooking hot. So I think there's an air bubble right inside the uh, housing. That's a problem. So I'm gonna let this cool off a little bit. I'm gonna pop the cap. Hopefully it starts to suck some radiator fluid in there. I filled up the reservoir all the way, but it hasn't sucked anything out of the reservoir yet. So I'm hoping when it cools off, I can pop that cap off. It'll suck some fluid in there and get rid of that bubble. 
I've been playing around. I just drove the Jeep for about a half hour. I just came back and I've had it sitting on the driveway idling for a little bit now. And it's just sitting right at 210. So uh, apparently the work that I did definitely fixed everything. So I think that's going to wrap this up. Oh, Mike. And thanks for watching. Free my garage.